Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 112. This episode is sponsored by Mr. J's Savannah Smoke Shop, located here in Rhode Island. They have an outstanding selection of premium handmade cigars. And by the Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island. It's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon by clicking on our website on the HCC logo. And by Debonair Cigars. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. And by Ocean State Cigars, try the J. Grotto series, including the Connecticut Shade Silk and the limited edition J. Grotto Reserve Alliance and the new J. Grotto Anniversary. Visit them on the web at OceanStateCigars.com. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined by my co-host, Mr. Will Cooper, on the lines via Skype. Welcome, Will. Hey, greetings, everybody. And uh, Todd LaScola is sitting here next to me who needs to fix his microphone. Yeah, Welcome, Todd. Did. Thank you. <laughs> Back to the show from next door, the Havana Cigar Club, uh, joining us tonight to uh, help us with our Stoogies of the Week segment, uh, among other things, and talk about cigars and ridiculous things like pipes and vapor, and we're you, just going to gotta be ridiculous. Well, you've been out of control all week. I, I have been out of control bike. all week. I, I have, I've tried to give him therapy. <laughs> <laughs> just, it didn't work. I have, I have gone off the deep end. And uh, I'm actually, uh, you know, when you try all of that stuff, it gives you this newfound appreciation for cigars. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so nice to, um, to smoke a cigar. So, uh, Will, why don't you talk about the cigar that you're uh, smoking, and then uh, we'll come back here and uh, talk about uh, the cigar that Todd and I lit up. Yeah, I'm lighting a cigar by a, a company we've talked quite a bit about on Stogie Geeks from Costa Rica, Brundel Rey. Uh, this is their new... Uh, limited edition. Uh, it's called the Premium Limited Edition. They launched it at IPCPR. It's got a Costa Rican wrapper uh, with a Connecticut seed, an Indonesian binder, and a Nicaraguan filler. Um, and we're smoking, I'm actually smoking the Robusto here. A very different smoke. Um, what I seem to be getting is I'm getting that Indonesian binder on this thing, um, which sometimes imparts a bitter taste right now. So, I'm getting a little coffee, but I'm also getting this like bitter note, and it seems like that's what I'm. That's what how I'm proceeding it. I'm early into the cigar, so I'll see how it's going later on. Very cool. And Todd, what what did we light up? You handed this to me moments before the show. <laughs> yeah, it actually, said, we they, should smoke they just this. Come in. It's the uh, Fernando Leone, the new Preferito that uh, was released at the show and actually just started shipping this week. Yeah. It looks like the standard La Aurora Preferito number one size, maybe ish. Yes. Just it about there. It doesn't look as fat, actually. A yeah. little bit smaller, but yeah. it's... Uh, so I think it's a slightly smaller ring than the... Yeah, and so this is um, the Family Reserve. Yeah. So they actually released both the Fernando Leone and, and the Guillermo Leone, mm -hmm. and they just came in. They came in yesterday, so I grabbed just a couple to try today. Very cool. Thank you. It's actually smoking very nice so far. It's still getting warmed up. The, like the Fernando Leone's a good cigar. It, and I've been it's, it's been hit or miss with a lot of people I know, but I've liked it. It has, especially the last couple. The limited edition that came out with the box press was really good, and yeah. this is this is actually starting off very well. Yep. Cool. Uh, Will, what what segment did you want to do first? We don't have an official guest uh, interview for this show. Yeah, um, we could go right into. Uh, I guess we could just kick it off with the Stogies of the week. Okay. Let's do that. Will, why don't you get us started? Okay. Um, I'll kick it off. Um, I actually have been going, to, you know, this week they, uh, Pete Johnson announced his, um, the new monster. Um, so I was kind of getting in the ready, I was kind of getting ready with uh, the Tatawahe monster, and I decided um, to kind of go through some more of my pudgy monsters. So I'm going to kick it off with, I went back and I uh, smoked once again the Tatawahe, the Tiff, which is, uh, a new blend they put in the Pudgy Monster series. 
Um, it's a 4x50 Robusto, um, or short Robusto, and it actually is unique, and that's the first under the monster, little monster, puggy monster umbrella to have an Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. Um, this cigar has kind of been a polarizing one, I've noticed, with the Tatuaje fans. I think some have either liked it, and some have just not liked it. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I thought it was a medium-strength, medium-bodied cigar. Um, it's, so it's got a little more strength than your classic Ecuadorian Connecticut. I'm not ready to put it up there with a Cabaguan, which is, you know, I think it's just a real special uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut. Um, but it has a lot of classic flavors of, uh, you know, wood, nut, cream, a little bit of fruit sweetness, a little cedar in there. Um, not a groundbreaking Ecuadorian Connecticut cigar, but um, I think it did the job pretty well. You know, it was... Um, wasn't my favorite of the Pudgy Monsters, but it wasn't my least favorite either. Um, I gave it a fiver, assuming that if these were available in 20-count uh, boxes, I'd, I'd grab five of these. It's a nice short smoke to enjoy. Paul, you're the Ecuadorian Connecticut guy. Have you smoked this? I'm like the Ecuadorian Connecticut expert at this point. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it is I, your favorite. You, well, you, yeah. you made mention of the comparing this one to the Cabaguan. I mean, these cigars are in two total different classes. Yeah. Of it awesomeness, is. and the pudgy monster was nowhere near awesomeness for me. The awesomeness goes to the the Cabaguan. Um and I mean, I want to say I don't understand why it's not more popular, but I do understand why it's not more popular because the Tatuaje brand isn't on the Cabaguan yes. line. I think if they made the ta- the Cabaguan and said it's a Tatuaje Connecticut, they would it, probably sell five to six times more than what they sell now. Without a question, I mean yeah. that's that's certainly the problem when they when they yeah. don't associate with the Tatuaje. People walk by it, don't see it. It's in with the tatuajes, but they never see it. Right. I mean, because some, some retailers, Absolutely. you know, struggle to carry them. And some asked me what I thought of tatuaje, and I said I liked Cabaguan, and brought them in. And then they sat there for <laughs> since they opened, and then they had to close them out to some lucky patron. Yeah. Yeah, it w- we were set up. We were clearly set up. Paul goes, bring in the Capaguans. And, and I mean, we sold a, a, sold a little bit of it, but it certainly didn't catch I, I on. I think that's just the ones that John and I spoke. Yeah, and I think it was you and John. And yeah, John uh, manager there. John. So, and jo- yeah. yeah, John's our manager. So he's a, uh, and he's a, he like you is a, you know, unique, you know, very, palette, very particular yeah, palate. Yeah, a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Very, very particular. And um, I love the Capaguan in the morning. I, I, I'm like I, addicted to him at this point, like. Oh, I know because at least you bought, a couple you, of times a you week bought all our closeouts. I, re- I remember. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I need to smoke something for the show, and I'm like, but I really want to have a Cabaguan. I'm like, I've already talked about this on the show a lot, but I'm going to smoke one anyway. And the yeah. next one I'll light up. That one would definitely be for the well, show. No. If, yeah. if we're smo- if yeah. you and I are in the same place smoking in the morning, yeah. you usually have the Cabaguan, and I usually have the the Epernay. Yeah. You lose your own Epernay. Yeah, that's sort of my go to morning your, smoke. Yeah, you, you find your go tos and you stick with them. So. Yeah, and the Cabaguan, if you if you have it in different sizes, it it, it has a lot of different nuances with mm-hmm. it. I think the the size I got was the robusto size. Yeah, it's good. Um, I agree. Speaking of morning smokes, sometimes I like to go to Cuba to have my morning cigar. Um, I smoked an H Upman Half Corona. Um, this is a very very short cigar. Um, I don't have the exact sizes on this one. Very very good though. Like, my only complaint on some of these short cigars is actually a, probably almost the same exact size as the uh, Davidoff Nicaraguan Half Corona. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really good. It's like my same criticism that I have of the, the Davidoff Nicaraguan Half Corona is it's just too short. It just doesn't, it, you know, you, you, and you finish and you're like, oh, I, I wish there was like a whole other half to the cigar. Y- you um, can always smoke a second one, Paul. I can't accept this was my last one. <laughs> I had two of them that I traded for, and this was my last one. Uh, I want to say this was from, like, November of 2012, so it had some age on it. Um, it was fantastic. I mean, I, this is another cigar I can smoke every morning with coffee. Cuban cigars go really well in the morning with coffee for me, um, and this one especially. So, cool. Todd, have you smoked anything? Uh, you do a lot of sampling as well. Yeah. Oh, no, ab- absolutely. But uh, – I definitely have a lighter palate in the morning. Yeah, me and too. So, me too, though. Yeah, and so I have a tendency to stay stay very very light. As I said, the Illusion Epernay is one of those I go to pretty regularly in the morning, or a uh, La Aurora Preferito, Connecticut, which is my favorite. But it's even that's almost really? a little. See, I'm too, not a big fan of that one. I, I love that cigar, but it's just interesting. If it's too early in the day, it's actually still a little too strong for me. Yeah. That's sort of mid-morning. That's the 10, 11 o'clock smoke. I gotcha. You know, if it's an 8 o'clock smoke, 
it's uh, in our, before. our palates tend to differ dramatically. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, there are some cigars we agree on without question, but usually we're kind of all over the map on where we yeah. agree. No, so our no question. So. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely more of a medium plus guy as yeah. a normal rule. So mild plus earlier in the day mm. and very rarely do I go more than medium full. Right. Almost right. ever. Um, and if I do, I can appreciate it, but when I'm done, I'm, I'm done. Mm. Uh, Will, back to you. Okay, continuing with the uh, the Tatawahi Pudgy Monster, I, sm- I actually went through the um, the Tatawahi Face, uh, which is actually, in my opinion, and, and I know a lot of people, this is another one of those polarizing ones. I think this is the most underrated of the blends in, in the pud- in, in any of the monsters. I really have had good luck with this cigar. Despite the fact it has a Mexican wrapper, and everyone knows I'm very uh, picky on that. Um, but I think when, it, when Pete Johnson, who doesn't work with Mexican, has worked with it, it's been good. Um, so this one is a basically what it, what it has is it has the length of the little monster or the baby face, and it has the ring gauge of the original, the face. Um, so it's a 4 and 3 eighths by 56, which is actually the fattest ring gauges in all the monster series. Um, I, and I also think that this cigar, it, it always ages well. So I don't think it loses anything with age. Um, it's got a very classic profile in terms of uh, what you get from a Mexican wrapper with Nicaraguan. So you're going to get a lot of earth coffee. There's a little bit of grass, cream, and pepper in there. Um, the difference I got with this cigar, and I actually went and smoked uh, a baby face as well this week, which I didn't really write up, but um, I got more of a black pepper note while the I always remember with the baby face and the face, I had more of a red pepper note, and that's just something that I thought was different with the um, with the pudgy monster face. But I really, this is a cigar I really like in the monster series. It's been consistent. It's a box worthy cigar in my book. Well, I, I agree. <clears throat> Whatever Pete did with that face blend was just absolutely amazing. It, yeah, and you talk about it. I mean, you mentioned a lot of different flavors and uh, aromas that come off that cigar. And it, and it sounds to some to be, you know, a, a little absurd to get all those flavors from the cigar. But, dude, I've smoked a lot of the face. And it, every time I smoke them, I, I, I just I get different flavors, complex flavors. They all smoke perfectly. It's just it's one. It's his best monster release, I think. And yeah. It, and the thing is that wrapper, that Mexican wrapper is not overpowering the blend. And it, it, mm. it allows a lot of that other tobacco to really taste it, I think. You get those nuances. No, and actually that's. That that was where I was going to say is, is is I expected to be overpowering with the mm-hmm. Mexican wrapper, and we know I'm, that's not my p- profile. But what I found was it actually was toned down from a typical it is Catuaje cigar. It's, now, it's, when those first came out, they were pretty amped up. Okay. It yeah. took them a little time to, to kind of mellow out. Well, fortunately, I didn't get to them until they had mellowed out a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't it get was, it at the beginning. So. It yeah, and, and you could put these in your humidor. And like, I went back and smoked a couple. Like I said, I smoked a baby face as well, and they're smoking great. I mean, they're, they're two years old already, and, and they're just smoking great. So, I mean, the aging potential on this blend is, is mm-hmm. there. Beautiful. No, and, and as we said, the Tatuaje is usually too strong for me, but things like the Capaguana or the Avion, mm-hmm. which is another one that has the same problem. People walk by it, don't realize it's Tatuaje, and never try it. Right. And it's actually probably the most popular tatuaje in our humidor. Is which one now? Is the Avion. Interesting. Because really? John, yeah. Well, because we do have a lot more medium plus. Yeah. That medium plus to medium full person. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned John earlier, our manager. You know, we, we went to the show last year, and it was one of those things we were going to discontinue. I come back from the show, don't place a show order. And John comes back and goes, we have no Avions left in house. Because <laughs> he turned everybody onto it. Now yeah. it's now it's our best selling, <laughs> right, right, best selling tatuaje. Um, I actually picked this next one up in in your humidor, uh, Todd, next door. It's a Camacho Legendario, Connecticut. It's a six by sixty Connecticut. Um, I think it was Mallory that said that those have been there for a while, not very big sellers. And no. you know that's where I gravitate towards in your, in yes. your humidor. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you stuff do. Stuff that other people aren't buying. Yes. Um, I smoked it <laughs> first thing in the morning with coffee. It was good. I mean, I rated it a try one. It's kind of like your standard kind of Connecticut blend. It is. And 
and either the Robusto or actually the Churchill in that mm -hmm. is another one I can actually have in the morning. Yeah, it's pretty it's, mild. It's mild, yeah. but it has some, some good flavor. flavor. It's great with coffee. Right. Um, and that's that's sort of where it f falls, but it's it doesn't match our six by sixty guys. No, it our doesn't. six by they, sixty guys. They are, like something a little stronger. They like something stronger. We have one six by sixty guy who smokes the lighter stuff. But, yeah, and he smokes a lot of it, thankfully. Yeah, but uh, it's definitely the lighter six by sixties are not as popular as right the smaller I mean, size. This for me is it's in the same class as a Grand Habano. It's in the same class really? to me as a uh, regular Camacho sixty yeah. ring. Um, Connecticut, you know, I don't smoke a whole lot of 60 ring Connecticut's because it's just, it's a lot of cigar in the morning, even if it is mild, it's yeah. not what I'm reaching for in no. the morning. Um, now, Will, have you tried the Insidious? Yes, I have. What did you, are you, you going to talk about it on the show tonight or you didn't, did you write it up? For I, the have, I, I think I talked about, I was going to talk about it on the show tonight, but I've had it. Okay. And well, I, let's talk I about like it anyway. It. Yeah, I like it too. Well, a lot better than this one. I mean, not that that's really saying speaking <laughs> volumes, but I, <laughs> I really liked the Insidious a lot. I didn't think the Sweet Cap was overpowering. I thought it had good flavor. I think it's a cigar you can light up at 5.30 in the morning on a Sunday yeah. morning when I lit it up before I had breakfast uh, and be fine. Yeah, and John had it's one this weekend in the morning, and he yeah. said it was actually actually okay in the morning. Yeah. It, yeah. You yeah. get to the sweet tips and I run away. but I, I think that would turn a lot of people off, but... So, Will, what are, your, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I think when I was at the show and I talked to Christian and Tom Lazuka, they, they, they were very clear that this cigar was meant to be for the beginner. Yes. Uh, which they felt they didn't have in the line. And when, that was part of the reason with the sweet tip. I think, they've, I think they absolutely nailed it with that um, because it's not an expensive cigar. It's not an overpowering cigar. It's got some flavor. And that sweet tip kind of eases you in if you're a new cigar smoker. And it's very well made. I mean, Paul, it have is. you had any construction issues? No, I didn't. Well, I've only smoked one so far. They actually okay. sent us another one. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was. look, it's not a cigar that I would reach for, but I get I get what it's for. And I think what it's for, it's good. It's very good. Mm. It's not a bad cigar by any means. It's it's. I prefer something a little more, a little more robust. Uh, the sweet tip, I had no problem with. I, I had no problem right. with it either. Yeah, don't let that turn me off. Effect on it. Yep, I agree. Yep. Um, I, I got a question just back on the legendarios for Todd. Todd, <laughs> is that a cigar that's available anymore, or is, have they discontinued that with the revamping of Camacho? Yeah, it's it's really it's yeah it's pretty much not available anymore. Um, you don't see much of it. Is it's really what people have left in their stock at different places. Um, they haven't ruled out making more of them, but it, they at the sh even when we were at the show, they pretty much said, um, "Don't expect to get any more of these in." Wow, because I remember there was a time they were flying out of humidors in, in the country. Yeah. I mean, well, well, they've I think they've just changed their intentionally changed their sort of branding and style. Yeah, and yes. and, and, got, and and I think that's more the issue than the quality of the cigar is True. the fact that they're going for. Bolder, more, more aggressive cigars. True. Um, and and in fact, um, I mean, obviously, most of the Dickies are probably in their middle range now, and the signature just came in, and that's pretty popular with our medium full guys. Plus, yeah. But but they're staying away from that that lighter stuff. I mean, they're going to yeah. keep the only thing they kept was the original Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. Todd, have you felt? I mean, I've talked to retailers. Camacho just seems like the rebranding has worked very well. I mean, have you seen a lot of success with, with the line? Without a question. The, the packaging yeah. has made a huge difference. I mean, wow. we all know how many cigars are out there now. I mean, you walk into our walk-in, there's 800 facings almost in there now. Anything can get lost, but that Camacho, the rebranding, the big it label stands out. stands out. I mean, the big label's a pain. you got to yeah. get it off the cigar very quickly, especially right. if you smoke smaller Size yeah, ring. smoking the Robusto, you, you, you <laughs> almost like you're not even halfway through the cigar and you got to take the band yeah. off. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But but from a marketing standpoint, it was a great concept because it really has popped. Camacho went from being almost non-existent next door to a solid mover now with the new relaunch. Mm. I was so skeptical when they did it. And then when I saw it in person as opposed to the photos, it changed. It changed it, I saw it stood out in person. Yep. With, without a question, it, it really pops 
in a humidor. What I found interesting, though, is that Camacho for a long time was a pretty big seller. And they had the Havana line. They had the Connecticut line. And I actually liked to smoke those mm-hmm. years ago. And then I don't it was like this resurgence of boutique bla- uh, brands. And they kind of started falling by the wayside, but props to them for, like, reinventing themselves with some new marketing. Absolutely. No, without a question. Yeah. That's the advantage of uh, being behind a business powerhouse like Davidoff. Yes. Is they said, yes. okay, let's take it from a business standpoint and, right. and, and revamp it. And I think they absolutely will. You're absolutely right. They did a great job with it. Yeah, they did. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, Christian landed on his feet and is doing a fantastic job with CLE. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I mean, this is the Insidious we talked about is a CLE. CLE scar. So. scar. And, yeah. and, and Christian's done a great job. And that's, I mean, that's as much, I think, part of the reason for needing a rebranding is when you lose sort of the mm. soul of a line. Right. You've got to do something with it to differentiate because they're looking for more Christian. Right. And that's not going to happen. Christian's not there anymore. And so they took the... The pro- what I the, think is the proper way. The one way. cigar I missed, though, is that Camacho Connecticut 1118. And the CLE 1118 Connecticut is just not the same cigar it's, it's, as the Camacho It's not even close. No. Um, I was disappointed. Yeah, I, I, I was too because I was looking forward to it. Because, again, yeah. I'm, I'm more on that lighter, right, lighter right. palette. I was really <laughs> looking forward to it. And it turned out to be my least favorite CLE. Yeah. I, I guess at some point, well, we're going to have to go back and do a, a favorite Connecticut breakfast cigar segment. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. We kind of mix some of the new stuff in with some of these older ones. Yeah. Um, and, and see. Um, along the lines of value cigars, I like to, I've like been trying to be more diverse in my smoking profile. And not as, just, as I saw yesterday. As, yeah. I, I, or two, a couple of days ago when we were having a, our scotch. Yeah, I, so this is the cigar I smoked while we were having our scotch. We were smoking a tw- uh, smoking. We were drinking a twenty-one-year-old Balvini. Scotch, Balvini, um, and I was pairing it with my Brick House Maduro, which is <laughs> what's the retail on that? In, in six bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's like between five and six dollars. I thought it was really good. You know, I think this is a fiver for sure. I think if you need a value cigar that. You know, if you put down and someone knocks it over, you're not crying because it's a $15 or $20 cigar. Um, This one delivered good flavor. It had a good amount of strength to it. It was actually a very strong cigar um, on on the strength meter. It was, uh, you know, full-bodied, good flavor, had a lot of those chocolatey kind of notes to it, um, a little bit of spice. Well, have you smoked a lot of the Brick House? Yeah. I mean, I I tend to like the Maduro better. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... It's just that's just my preference in that one, yeah. but it's for the price point. It's a solid cigar yeah. and uh, does well. No, I, I agree. Well, that's you know, I have I'm not a big Maduro guy, but there's a handful of them, and that's one of them that I think is is stronger in the Maduro. Yeah. As far as yeah. when I say stronger, I mean better better yeah. flavor on the cigar. Yeah. And at that uh, price point, uh, yeah. you can't go wrong. We're going to talk about a Maduro that I really like this week too. Yeah, that has the Araparaca wrapper on it, which is like the Mexican. It's hit or miss with me, but I think they did a real good job with that wrapper on that Burkhouse Maduro. Mm. Will, back to you. Um, so this was my smoke of the week, and um, it was uh, it's a cigar that I really had not gotten around to smoking for a while, um, namely because it was it looked so nice. I just didn't want to light it up, but finally I decided I wanted to. And it was the uh, Davidoff Art Edition, two thousand fourteen. Oh, yes. Um, which is a Dominican Puro, um, and it's a 5 and 5 sixteenths by 54 Perfecto. Um, and it's got a pretty steep price point of $35. Um, so it's it's not a cigar that, you know, it is a more pricey cigar. I'll put it like that. I, I like how we went, from the, this cigar. we went from the $5, $5 to, the $35. Uh, to the $35 cigar. That was great transition. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it took, what timing. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I was looking. Davidoff, I guess what they did is um, they, they started this thing called the uh, Davidoff Art Initiative. Um, and what they're looking to do is they're kind of looking to help some emerging artists. So they're establishing a, uh, an art residency program. Uh, for emerging artists in the Dominican Republic, they're putting some art grants in place. And then what they're doing is, as a part of this program, is they're saying to these artists, we're going to give you an opportunity to do some artwork for uh, the packaging on the cigars, which is what they did with the art edition. Now, 
Davidoff's done this before with the Zeno line. Um, they're doing it with the Zeno New York and the Zeno LA and now the Zeno Texas. So they've kind of taken the same thing and they're moving it to one of the limited editions. Um, and so there's like different, you'll see that there's different bands on some of the art yeah. editions. There's two different ones, but it's the exact same blend. I thought it was different, different blends. It's very deceiving. Yeah. So it can look like two different cigars, but um, what I got to say is home run. I mean, one of the best perfectos I ever had. Um, it's very, very complex. You know, we talk about cigar that was throwing a lot of flavors out. I could, I could just put a potpourri of flavors. Um, I mean, it kind of had more cedar and fruity sweetness up front. Then I kind of, in the second, third, saw it, more of a coffee note emerge there. Um, it had this creaminess on the finish. Here's the thing that really impressed me is the way this cigar was made. It had a rounded cap. And I think that really, uh, the way they, that rounded cap is, it just helped, it, it just helped this thing. Uh, it drew perfect. Um, and then it had a uh, open foot, which I thought was also good because the burn kind of came out. So I think they really took their – they did a great job with the construction of this cigar. Um, it's a cigar that's one of the top cigars I've had this year. Uh, it's the best Davidoff I've had this year without question. It's a fight Chuck Norris. Now, have you, uh, I, have you I, smoked I the Royal Salomon, Will? Um, not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, you may, yeah. you may change your mind about the best Davidoff that came out this year. Now you, yeah, you said that it was an Oasis level, right? Ah, uh, it's Oasis for sure. Yeah, yeah. that thing is ridiculous. Now, now, Paul, you and I were talking about this cigar earlier before the show. And the art edition, yeah. I kind of said, I kind of said this was like more of a medium to medium plus, and you, you kind of made a point. You thought it was a stronger cigar in terms of strength. Yeah. Like when I read your review about it, Will, I, I, the way you described it, uh, I kind of thought back to when I smoked it, and I thought it was a much stronger cigar than the way you had described it. But now, I smoked them when they first, first came in a few months ago. In fact, when did I smoke mine? In July. I smoked mine in the early July um, when they had first come in. So I, I, maybe I, I, since then, they've kind of mellowed out a little bit. Yeah, they've been in my humidor since June. I got these I mean, in June, and they've been if that cigar there. mellowed out and got some more flavors, I would probably put it at a four and a half. Fight Chuck Norris for him too, Will. Yeah, because yeah. you know? I had, I had, I had it at the end of August. Yeah, and I, and I thought it was a little bit more than a medium, but again, I've got a lighter palate. Yeah, but I thought it was sort of a medium plus to medium full. But it was actually, it was, it was a very good cigar. In fact, I thought it was better than any of the art. Items they did on the Zeno lines. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, 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 I really, agree I thought it, I thought it was so much better than that. I, I was Did actually. Did you buy impressed. a box at thirty-five dollars a cigar? No, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah, me, I just broke. I've got some members who would though. The two I had, so um, it, it, it's do a good cigar, come? but um, hey, look, I know come? it's not, there, you know. The it's not even in my budget. So are these ten? Are these ten count? The ten count boxes. Are they ten count boxes? Yeah, the ten count boxes. That's only three hundred fifty yeah. bucks. No, it's yeah, but that's one of those cigars where you where you go, where, where you see it and go, you know what? I'm in the mood for that today. Yeah, you know that that's when you're splurging on the thirty five dollars. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's why I didn't smoke it. I just had to be. I really wanted to be at a point where I can enjoy it, and I happen to have some time last weekend to start smoking these. So, um, I had a. Speaking of expensive cigars, now we're, we're completely transitioning from budget cigars to expensive and hard to find cigars. This is a God of Fire Serie B from uh, with a 2011 on the on the band. Um, well, do you, we've talked about this cigar before. Do you remember anything about the wrapper or? Not at the top of my head. I don't. I don't either. Uh, all yeah. I know is that these cigars are freaking awesome. Good lord, do these cigars just smoke? The flavors that you get, it, there's this awesome sweetness that persists throughout the entire cigar. There are the other flavors that kind of change up, you know, a little bit of spice, maybe some, a little bit touch of earth, a little bit of cedar, but there's this like prominent sweetness that just happens throughout every single one of these that, that I've smoked. The Robusto being like pretty, pretty close to Oasis in my book. This one is a four and a half Chuck Norris for him. This was the larger ring gauge size, probably a 58 ring gauge maybe a six by 58 they come in gift sets uh with all the different sizes in the line they're very expensive um but they are just so it's one of those like you said cigars that every once in a while you're in the mood for that one you're like i yeah. want one of those now these fortunately you can buy in a five count with all the different sizes for a hundred and change or whatever. yeah so, so. yeah 
Paul, I just did a quick just kind of look at this. So you're smoking the B, yeah. and it, the B came in uh, a sun-grown and a broadleaf, and mm -hmm. I believe you smoked from looking at that as that's the broadleaf. That's definitely broadleaf, yeah, for sure. I don't think I've ever smoked the sun-grown in the Siri B2011. I think I've only had the broadleaf. I've smoked other God of Fires with a lighter wrapper on them. I don't know if those were all sun-grown or not. They were not I as good. Yeah, you really got to delve into the God of Fire, Will. Yeah, I mean... Uh, the, Break out uh, the credit card. <laughs> Tend to spend I some know, money. Yeah, I know I've smoked... Um, I'm trying to remember. I know I smoked the Cameroon once. There's a Cameroon one I smoked. Mm. And it was it was, it was was the Carlito. Uh, I think I smoked that one, too. I think yeah. The one I'm I sorry, Don Carlos. Too. It was the Don, Don Carlos. Okay. That was Carlos. an excellent cigar. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. Any, anytime you get to that Cameroon wrapper, it's... I'm a big Cameroon fan. Me too. I, I'm a huge Cameroon fan. We but did a whole segment on it, and let me tell you, Todd, the feedback we got about that segment was just phenomenal. People are like, I had no idea about this Cameroon rap. Really? My friend that lives in Africa, he actually moved from the States to Africa to do relief work. It's called Hackers for Charity, and um, he's in Uganda. And I'm like, dude, you know, like, one of the best rappers on all cigars I'm like, comes from Africa. He's like... Really? I said, it comes from the country of Cameroon. He's like, dude, you are a total cigar nerd, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it is. And I mean, but that's what's hurt the Cameroon wrapper, too, because it's almost impossible to get out. Right. Um, when I was we with. Talked, well, I, you, the conversation we had was what kind of sparked that segment, actually. To, yeah. And I researched it, and yeah. it turns out you're right for, <laughs> for once. Yeah, um, yeah, no, yeah. That, that, that doesn't happen often. <laughs> no, pretty much always, but yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's no, it's yeah, because they have to bribe people to get stuff out, and that's what I was saying. My friend that lives in Uganda, he tells same stories about getting stuff in and out of Africa. I was like, dude, I gotta bribe people. It, it's it, you talk. I was I was at the La Aurora factory last year, and it was in speaking with Manuel, their their master blender, and he said, as much as we love this, he goes, even if we're willing to pay three times what we have to pay for any other wrapper, mm -hmm. he said, even then you can't get it out because you know. They say they're going to get it out, and then somebody else steals it from them. Right. So it doesn't do you any good. And um, I think that's really hurt the traditional Cameroon wrapper. For sure. Which, which I love. They, they put the Cameroon on. It's why I smoke so many of the, the Cameroon and the Connecticut Preferitos. Yeah. Is because that's a true African Cameroon wrapper on that Preferito yes. from La Aurora. And that Cameroon Preferito, and whether that's it's the in. the non-tubo non Preferito the, you have in, in the shop. Yeah, we have the non Tubo Preferito in the shop, and we also have the Preferito Lancero in the shop uh, which in is, Cameroon, which yeah. is... You've had that since the beginning. Beginning. It's, That's uh, my... I, I have a bo box of... They come in cabinets of 50. Mm -hmm. I keep a cabinet of 50 at home yeah. constantly. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, go we, we go through cabinets um, of 50 pretty consistently. So the uh, what's the, the, the cost of the regular Preferito not in the Tubo? Because the Tubo ones are expensive. They're like 15 bucks, right? Well, no. The Tubo in Rhode Island, the Tubo... Preferitos are twenty one, twenty oh, yeah. twenty one dollars. Oh, they're, really really they're fifteen to sixteen dollars out of the cellar. Okay. Um, you happen to be a member, so you get a little bit of a discount. So yours yes. is less, but it's um, and what a difference in its popularity when you bring it when from a twenty one dollar cigar yeah. to a fifteen fifty cigar. It's uh, it's 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 a big difference. I mean, it's it's a pricey cigar, but it's got seven years of age sitting on it, and it's just. I never thought I would like the Preferito size because it's a little. I I thought it would smoke a little awkward. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite cigar to smoke outside of a Lancero, is that Preferito size because it just burns so perfectly all the way through if they're well made. Right. Yeah, I uh, agree. I mean, even the even the larger Preferito that we're smoking now. And I this mean, this is, came in yesterday. This is really good. I can tell it, it's, it's it's burn is not. It's burning well. Is well constructed. Yeah. But I can tell it's got it, a little bit of moisture. Well, it, it probably needs to come out of it because it just came in. It came in yesterday. It's enough smoke. Without but a I question. tell you what, though, the flavor, I'm getting kind of this interesting kind of sweet flavor. It's got a sweet flavor. It's definitely yeah. a sweet. I, I was just smoking this now going, wow, this is a great cigar. In fact, I looked down to see see the price tag on it because I was like, wow, I, th I, I Wait, expected it to be a more expensive cigar than that at 11.75 retail with our Rhode Island taxes. That's not bad, actually. I mean, that's, that's a... That's uh, a pretty big cigar for 11.75. Yeah, it's... It, yeah. I was that I literally looked down and expected to see seventeen or eighteen bucks. I I did. I flipped it over just to see. Uh, I'm I'm incredibly jealous right now because 
my cigar, my Brun del Rey is really gone south. I'm kind of a little disappointed right now in it. Are, are, we, go to plan are, B, are, we, are we allowed to show well? You can go to plan B. Are we allowed to show well? Yeah, we. Yeah, we. we <laughs> well, well, just so you know, that's how far we made it. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, about, yeah, about a half an inch. I, I, it got very bitter. It got. It has a very bitter taste, and, and an Indonesian binder's coming right through on this thing now. Mm. So yeah. I mean, I, and I've and I've liked a lot of Brun del Rey stuff, and I think they have, have some too. good stuff. This We've one, reviewed a lot of it. I'm on not the show. sure of yet. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Um. Well, what else should be? Oh, did you just go? Or I'll go. Is it my turn? Yes, or is it your turn. It, it, it's Paul's turn. Is it? Okay. Okay. Oh no no no! You no, did the Wills, Maduro. I did it's the Maduro. Wills. Yeah, it's, it's Will's turn. Okay. Sorry. Um, I'll kind of start this one off with last week when Paul, you were out last week, and I know we were talking to Skip Martin, and um, we got on the subject of acquisitions and stuff. Long story short, um, I mispronounced Sam Lacia's name. So Cigar Craig pointed that out. Now, why am I mentioning that? Well, first of all, if anyone, anything I want people to tell me, they can tell me however they want to tell me. I'm, I'm totally comfortable with that. I'm big enough to take it. Um, so just let me know if I am mispronouncing. And my apologies to Sam. I'm saying that because I'm probably going to mispronounce mm. this cigar. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> um, it's the La Aroma de Cuba Noblesse. 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 Okay, so I was pretty close. Yeah. Um, it, this one just hit the shops in North Carolina this week. Um, from Ashton Cigars. Um, it is a six and a half by 50 limited edition cigar in the La Aroma de Cuba line. Um, it's got a beautiful, and when I say this is one of the nicest wrappers I've seen this year. Yeah, is that, a light, the, is that light blue or silver? That's light blue. It's light blue. Okay. It's light blue, and it actually looks good against that Rosado wrapper. It does. That Rosado yeah. wrapper is such a nice grade on it. Because as we know, blue on the band... Does Generally it, not a good idea. Aesthetically pleasing, but usually it, thumbs it's down. An but un- this light blue is almost like a silverish kind of. Well, maybe that's the way Will took the picture, but it, it, it's it's no, it's it's pretty much like that. But that wrapper is so silky that it almost. I, I, it's hard to explain. It actually it works. It yeah. actually looks better than I would think it would look. I wouldn't put that color on most cigars. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm. No, actually, I smoked that about a month ago, Will, and I, and they just hit our. Our our shelves, uh, in fact, they're not even up yet. They came in today, and um, but I smoked it a month ago. That is an exceptional cigar. I was it, it, yeah. really sh- I was really happy with the way that smoked. Yeah, I mean, it had um, it had a very classic profile. It wasn't. Um, I got this interesting cinnamon note. I thought in the middle, the the, the, the two I smoked, um, but it it was a. I haven't been. I've been hit or miss with La Roma de Cuba. I've tended to like the Mia Moors Which more is, than the. Uh, the classic and the EE. I thought this was a very, very good cigar. Um, and it's got a little bit of a higher price point, to say the least. With a lot, La Roma de Cuba, I always thought it was a value price line. I thought it was interesting they went for a $16 price point with this. They made it limited edition. I think it's like 3,000 boxes. Um, but it was an impressive cigar. Um, and I think it's, like I said, I had it pretty much off the truck when they came. Yeah. So um, I think, and there was no problems with it or anything, but I think it's got more potential there. It 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 it, it really is something that's like as you said, it's a, it's pricier, and I happen to agree with you, Will, on that. I'm I smoke a lot more of the Mia Moore line uh, than I do any of the other La Roma de Cuba, but when I smoked that, I was I was actually wowed by that cigar, and that doesn't happen very often. I'm gonna ask yeah. you, I'm gonna ask a question that I should know the answer to, and I'm embarrassed that I don't, but I gotta ask it anyway. When we say Rosado. Is that the speaking to the type of plant, the priming, or the priming on a particular type of plant, or the fermentation process after uh, it's been harvested? Okay, so now I don't feel bad. Yeah, you shouldn't feel bad. <laughs> um, because I mean, we've talked about. Um, Sorry, there's just this. There's all of a sudden a. It sounds like it. running water in my water, headphones I heard right now. It's kind of making me have to pee, actually. It's kind of interesting. Well, we'll get the uh, production assistants are all over that. I don't know if it's feed or not. Maybe. Yeah, it seems to just be wash. It yeah. is. You guys doing dishes over there? <laughs> well, d- yeah. dishes is better than some of the alternatives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys know there's a bathroom in the back. Well, no, right? no, that, that was I the first thing I went. I went. Uh oh, is there broken? Is there a leak? Yeah, <laughs> because it's our building. Todd so. being the building manager as well. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Will, is your sprinkler system coming on at home? Is that inside? No, I'm hearing it. Through, I'm hearing it from your end. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely coming through my headset. Yeah, it's a, definitely a headset sound. It, it oh, is. okay. So they're hearing it on the uh, live stream as well. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, that's a. There's a there's a great discussion happening on the. They look kind of panicked. What was I saying? Oh, so Rosado. Rap- Rosado. Will, did you use that intentional water running to uh, look up Rosada? Yeah, did you create no, a diversion? Didn't, I didn't. Um, but um, I'm not gonna. I don't know the answer, but I know it's not a seed, from what I understand. I think it's something as a result of the fermentation process. That, that's what I remember, Will. But I I couldn't remember enough to go. Yes, that's the case. Yeah. Because you tend to see like uh, Ecuadorian Habano Rosado, Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro. Um. So, I mean, go. I always look at Rosado. It's got that Colorado mm-hmm. red in it. So, it's, you know, out of that fermentation process, it, it comes out a little more red, this at least. Yeah. I mean, that wrapper for a Rosado is one of the nicest Risottos I've ever seen. No, Fuente. I, I, blown, Fuente. I mean, you talk about cigar porn. I was blown away when I saw that wrapper. But now, Rosado wrappers on Fuente um, usually mean something very special and something very limited in a lot of their lines. Yes. Which. But now we see other manufacturers also with risotto. So, you know, I think like we did a segment on Cameroon, we're going to have to have a, a segment on. Yeah. Risotto yeah. Wrappers. Well, now yeah. the Fuente Rosado is a great stick in in this 858. They make it in the Hemingway. Hemingway. Is but this... they make other ones that aren't like as special. Like the King T came out in risotto and it was just kind of okay. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't anyway. But with Pepin, which is where this cigar is made at the Garcias, their risottos tend to have a nice red shade to it. Yeah. Is what I. Okay. Uh, I smoked the Bodega Reunion Aperitivo. Todd, what, can you tell us about this cigar? Because it, you brought these in to the shop, right? And I, I know nothing. This comes from Houses of Emilio, right? Yes. Okay. And. Um, and I know almost as much as you do about it. Because John was the John's one. the one who brought it in. John is John's a big the one that John yeah. is a big yeah. house of meal guy. Our, our our manager John is a is a, a big cigar guy. In fact, you might you may catch him passing through the show if Paul will allow him on mm. in the, in the near future. He's a big cigar guy, but he he's a big house of Emilio fan, and he's the one who brought in House of Amelia, which has turned into a very hot line. Okay, so since I didn't do my homework, I'm going to turn it over to Will. And see what the cigar encyclopedia has to say about this cigar. Okay, so Bodega was the last. It was the last uh, line to be released by House Romilio. Um So I think it's the ninth brand. Uh, it started by a guy named Gino Domenico. Um, what they did is uh, their first release is under this line called Reunion, and they have two blends. One's called Digestivo. One's called Aperitivo. Um, the Digestivo is a San Andreas blend over Nicaraguan. The Aperitivo is an all Nicaraguan blend. It has a, a Jalapa Habana wrapper. Um, so I've had it. Um, it's, it's a Puro. That one's a Nicaraguan Puro, more of a natural. Yeah. So uh, I'll let you know. I'm curious what your thoughts on what were it. So my, my take on this was it was uh, pretty medium bodied. In fact, you can tell by the picture I was in my car on my way to work in the morning when I lit this one up. I kind of took a chance and said... I've smoked so many Cabaguans on the way into work in the morning. I got to smoke something for the show. So I ate breakfast and just kind of hoped for the best. And uh, I lit this one up. And it had this great graham cracker kind of sweetness to it, which is kind of interesting from a Nicaraguan Puro. Usually you get some spice and, you know, different kind of more on the chocolate and cocoa flavor of the flavor spectrum. Not usually like on the graham cracker kind of spectrum um but this one was definitely had a graham cracker kind of sweetness to it it didn't change up much throughout the whole cigar i thought it was good it didn't really stand out for me above and beyond the rest but i thought it was a solid fiber yeah and that's that that was my because i've tried most of the house of emilio yeah and 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 that's sort of where it felt falls there's really nothing bad in that line right but a lot of them are in that fiber category yeah i i totally agree yeah this one would probably be a fiber in my book, it's um, it when I had it, and I'm gonna go back and smoke it again. When I first had it, it, really needed to be laid down for a while. 
mm. both the operativo and the digestivo. Um, the digestivo actually is I like it a little bit a little better, even though it has that San Andreas wrapper. But I thought the aperitivo needed some time. Um, I smoked it again; it was better, probably around a fiver. I, I don't know, if, like you said, I don't think it's a cigar. It's gonna have tons of transitions in it, but it, it had some solid flavor. Very cool. Will back to you. Okay. Um, so this is uh, Paul. You a few weeks ago uh, talked about this cigar, and um, somehow the. Um, Somehow this made it to my house. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know, I don't how. know how it did. I don't know how it happened either. Um, You're welcome, but, Will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, that's yeah, that's right. right. It came with some a... other stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It came uh, a little indirect. But uh, so thank you. Um, Sancho Panzo Bellicosos, um, which I had not had this cigar before. And this is Cuban because we, we should clarify. Sancho Panza does make non-Cuban cigars. Well, the brand right. is also available in non-Cuban as well as Cuban. This is the Cuban version. Correct. Um, and you know, this is a long, and I had not tried this cigar for whatever reason. I mean, it's no secret. I don't smoke as many Cubans probably as you guys do. I do smoke Cubans and, but this cigar is kind of like an iconic line and this size in particular is kind of iconic. So I, I really wanted to smoke it. Um, and, and I know Paul, you smoked it a few weeks ago. I kind of was in the same boat as you, Paul, with this cigar. Um, good cigar. I felt it could do. I felt it could do a little more. Um, it had a lot of notes of earth, which you got. I had a little bit of a grassy note to it. There was some pepper that was layered over it, and then occasionally I was getting a little bit of a cocoa note. I thought it was going to kind of explode with flavor at times, and it just didn't do that. Um, I had a tight drawer on mine, though. Interesting. I had a tight drawer, so I didn't know if when you know if anyone kind of touched this or not. I did. I, you know, I had to take it and put it in the bag and write Will on the bag, and in that process, I cursed it with some Paul syndrome. Yeah, but now, the, was it, yeah. what Paul did is he packed his own bag. Yes, and then changed the name. Name and right. sent it to you, Will, because you <laughs> yeah, know that exactly. Paul gets all the plug cigars. It wasn't a horrendous drawer, so yeah. it wasn't like you know if it was a horrendous drawer, I wouldn't have even talked about it. But it was a little tighter than I preferred. Yeah. Uh, Good flavors, hoping the more well-priced Habano cigar. I think it's in the eight to nine dollar range in U.S. dollars. I'd smoke it again. It's a fiver, like you said, Paul. Yeah. yeah. I, now, I think I, the grass on that sort of overpowered. Yeah. The other nuances that were coming out of it. I got a, a really earthy yeah. kind of profile. Yeah. Um, earth and grass, yeah. yeah earth and both, grass so. too. I would I would agree with that assessment as a flavor profile. Now, what's interesting was in like roughly 2010, maybe time frame. I smoked a Sancho Panza Bellicoso from like 1998, and I tell you what, it was one of the most fantastic cigars I've ever smoked in my entire life. So I just need to put these down for 12 years, and then they'll be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but you're capable of doing that. that. That's a long time to wait, but you know, I've got room in the back of my humidor, and I can just bury you know, it and never see it again. Bury it and never see it again, you know, in, uh, in – well, really, when my oldest son goes to college – yeah, when my oldest son goes to college, then it'll be time to smoke these. So, and he can have one with me at that point. Absolutely, <laughs> he hasn't yet. Well, he's only six, so <laughs> I, I no, know how old he is. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's. A, I'll tell you what, Paul. When I just had my first cigar with my son in yeah. January, and it's a special moment. Um, you know, he's so eighteen. What, so, what cigar uh, did you give your son? Did I ask you this already? Well, I don't know. If yeah, and it was a surprise. He ended up smoking. Uh, with, this is one you wouldn't expect, but it was the uh, San Cristobal Elegancia. Yeah, he wanted something that's right, not I too that. strong, but he wanted a little spice to it. Mm -hmm. So, and he liked it. And now, is he smoking cigars more often with you now, or? Um, he went off to college, so yeah. you know, we, he, on, we before he went to college, we were having them, you know, on like. Uh, Father's Day, uh, when we were on vacation. Mm -hmm. um, so when I go down and see him in Orlando, I know we're going to go over to Corona together. So he's not a regular smoker. He's not raiding my humidor yet, but he's, he's, he's developing his palate. So it's, it, it's a lot of fun to kind of pass it on. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So. No, I um, did that with my stepson when he, when, he, yeah. when, he, when he turned 18. And I gave him a Bolivar, Cuban Bolivar Petite Corona. Yeah, those which are is kind the way of strong. To, yeah, it was kind of strong, but he loved it. Nice. Um, but since then, he still smokes somewhat regularly with me, and I always mm -hmm. know when he's come by the house because he's in college, because I look and my good stuff's all gone. Yeah. <laughs> the house, and I, I sit there and go, "Ryan, you come by?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah." You know, he goes, "You spoiled me." Yeah. He goes, "So now I can't smoke anything regular. I got to no, buy good stuff." And what's I'm interesting, just Cuban, but <laughs> what's interesting good is my humidors both have locks on them, but 
it's a lot of our listeners are like, I do computer security for a living. And like part of that is we all, a few, like several years ago, this big thing was to learn how to lock pick. And so now I teach my son how to pick locks. So there's no way I can keep him out of my humidors now. Unless <laughs> <laughs> there's just no way. So, so, so it's, it's bad to smoke a cigar at six. But it's okay to pick a lock. It's okay to pick a lock. Okay. A lock picking is something he can do, which is which is totally fine. Um, it's got to be 18 to have a cigar, though. Uh, I smoked the Echicera Maduro in the Toro size. I really, really liked this cigar. I thought it was. I thought you would, and I, I said thought I thought it was you'd like really it. good. It's a good medium. It, you know, it starts off kind of medium. It ends medium full. I thought it had great flavors. It was very well balanced. It had like this little bit of sweetness thing going on. You know, coupled with some of those typical Maduro kind of profile of, you know, the cocoa and a little bit of earth. Um, I rated a box split. I thought this was great. Well, it, it's actually funny because I smoked one three months ago, mm -hmm. and it was unsmokable. And, and in a short period of time, yeah. which probably tells you how long it can age, but yeah. in a short period of time, I smoked one last week. And I was shocked at how much different it was and better it was. Because I actually liked yeah, the, the original Echocera. The original yeah, Echocera. Yeah, I actually like that's That's a morning smoke when I want to break it up. Yes. That's a great, that is great morning smoke. Especially for the price point. Yep. You know, if you're an Avo person, you can go to the Echocera for yep. short money in comparison. Yes, that's true. No, that's, that's a good. And it's a. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I will say that the last third was not very good. And I think that's an age thing. I think that this whole cigar will be just as good as the first two-thirds with a little more age. Yeah. No, so yeah. you definitely Three, corroborated my story by saying yes. that, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so it was good. I liked it. And, Will, you thought I would like this cigar, so. Yeah, I mean, and it was similar experience Todd had. I had it at the show, um, and then I've had it recently. And um, I actually wanted to re – I didn't review it because when I had it, it was one of those things I wasn't reviewing a cigar, but I was just kind of enjoying a cigar. But I was really impressed with how it progressed – it was kind of like the East Stunners last year. When the East Stunners came out, they were unsmokable. Yeah. And then they really just they sat down and they really got good. I, I think that's one of the problems at the show is everybody rushes to get these things yes. out to the show. And uh -huh. I think it hurts them more than it helps them. Because yep. you smoke it at the time and you go, wow, this isn't either unsmokable or barely smokable. Mm -hmm. And then three, four months later, you go back to them and you go, hold on. That's actually not a bad cigar. Uh, Will, back to you. Um, I went and I smoked uh, the Casada 2014 Oktoberfest in the Das Boot size, which is the uh, it is the Bellicoso size, uh, 6552. It's a Dominican Puro, and I've I've kind of, I've always liked the Oktoberfest line, and I don't know necessarily if it's a cigar I have to have with a, with a beer. I just kind of like it for what it is. I've found that each release of the, the Oktoberfest, there's some commonality and then there's some, some differences. Um, so I've, I've found they differ from year to year. Um, and then I find the sizes very much differ. So, and, and you know, I was talking to Terrence Riley at the show, and he said it's a lot of it's because they use different vintages every year and that. Um, the Das Boots one, I just really hadn't smoked a lot of the Torpedo. It seems like I've smoked every one of the other sizes. So I figured, let me give this a try. Um, and overall, I thought it was a good cigar. It had a lot of the earthy, chocolate, uh, pepper notes. Um, every one of the Oktoberfest, it seems like the sweetness is where it differs on these cigars. Um, I've had like honey sweetness on some. I've had citrus on others. This one had a real interesting sweetness. I called it blackberry for lack of a better word, but I kind of thought it was something similar like that. It was a subtle sweetness. Um, I actually thought it was pretty good. Um, Medium to full strength, medium to full bodied, uh, drew and burned very well for Torpedo in my book. Um, I have it as a fiver. I'm still not going to put it. I kind of, my favorite's been the Kaiser Ludwig and the Krone um, are my two favorite sizes, which is the box press. Toro is the Kaiser Ludwig and the Corona is the Krone. But uh, this is a good cigar. Um, I think I, I think this was a very good, I'm, I'm going to smoke some more of the sizes. I think this was a very good release of the Oktoberfest this year. Mm. I think it was just a little bit smoother than last year's, as you said. Yes. And 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 it made it smokable, you know, on on a level for people who have a wide variety of palates. You so know, now wait, you could sort of get there. <clears throat> the 2014 one that you smoked, Will, this is the one with that newer band on it, right? Yeah. So they changed the bands, and and I, it's sounding like they're gonna do different bands every year going forward. 
because people couldn't identify. Like, the first three all had the same band, and you could not tell the difference. Did the blend change from year to year? No, but the vintage of tobacco did. Did. And so it changes uh, the, the style of it. And it has your favorite kinda, color yeah. band this year. It says blue on it yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah. It so it's kind of like uh, you, have, you ever had the, uh, the Lido Gomez, the LGs? Yes. It's kind of along those lines. Like these, I find the Oktoberfest will smoke different year to year. And Todd really, I think, nailed it. it it's, it's a lot smoother this year. So a different vintage, does that mean there's older tobacco in this newer release because the tobacco well, they have for the blend is aging? or More, more like the wines where... Every year, the tobacco is a little bit different. I got you. They tweak the blends every year. Not not the wrapper, but they tweak the, the blends on the, on yep. the filler. But I think it's more the vintage. So some yeah. vintages end up a little stronger because mm -hmm. of the weather and I got the, other, the other crop type issues. And it's But it was definitely a smoother cigar this year than last year. I thought it was a stronger cigar this year than previous years. I thought the strength profile was pretty amped up on it. Maybe that's because some of the older ones I have have aged a little bit. Yeah, I, I think you have that little crone. That little crone has a lot more strength than, than this one does. Yeah. The, yes. The, no, the, you're right. Yep. The Bellicoso definitely, and that and that happens to be the size that I smoked of it. Was mm -hmm. also the Bellicoso will, and uh -huh. that, and that was um, it, it. Definitely was smoother than last year's Bellicoso, without a question. Yeah, I mean, this is the size I've smoked the least of, and I just decided, let me give it a little attention this time, and I was pleased with it. I mean, I was definitely pleased. I'm not a big Torpedo Bellicosa guy, but I was definitely pleased with the way this, uh, it, it burned and drew very well. Nice. Todd, anything else you've been smoking this week you want to talk um, about? While you pass me the ice over there, please. Sure. And actually, it's, it's sort of ironic, because this is probably my lowest smoking cigar week in a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because cause we bought the new building in Cumberland, and I've been up there. So That's it's, right. So it's sort of thrown off my smoking because I'm not used to the fact that I can't smoke everywhere anymore. Yes. Um, at least until, until the new – Until the building's built. Until, the, until the new build, building's right. built and the shop's open. And so it sort of threw off my uh, normal mm -hmm. smoking pattern. Um, but I did smoke earlier this week. Um, I had actually gone back to the – I had smoked the um, Guillermo Leone. Of the same cigar we're smoking now, mm. I had uh, actually smoked that yesterday, standing outside the building under the awning in the rain, um, while I was waiting for some contractors to come up, mm -hmm. and um, and it was and it was, it's going to be a good cigar, but I felt that that was younger than the Fernando we're smoking right now. This and I think is, this is really good. It, 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 I'll tell you yeah, what, I like this. this is. I, I'm very very pleased with this. Um, Guillermo's lines usually are a little bit stronger than Fernando's, mm -hmm. so I think if they're early, yeah, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult oh, on the smoking good. side. It, it, now, the Fernando Leone Family Reserve, that's been around. There's different sizes of this and different variations it, of it, right? Th there's a lot of different variations, mm. Coronas, Robustos, all the standard sizes, but this is the first time they released this, the Preferito style in both yeah. the Guillermo and Fernando. And I, I had the opportunity to talk with Manuel um, before the show. Manuel, who's the master blender again for La Aurora, um, before the show because I wanted to see if he was going to the show, and unfortunately he wasn't going. Oh, we're not ready to make any announcements tonight, are we? Um, no, but, but, but Will, you may want to uh, rearrange your plan to travel to Rhode Island slightly by a couple weeks. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I know. It's a uh, – yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but yeah, yep. uh, very but, um, well aware. Manuel, because Manuel knows very well what I like to smoke, and mm. um, and he said you've got to try the cigar when it comes. And he said both of them, but he told me the Fernando, which I'm normally more of a Guillermo Leon than a Fernando Leon type of guy. Yeah. And the first time that I was more Fernando was with the box press limited edition that came out um, last Sorry, year. Sorry, I'm just ashing all over oh, myself. Oh, oh, Todd, me too. Me too. Yeah. You're ashing all over yourself, or? No, no, no. Oh, I was more of a Guillermo till that box press came out last year. I, I absolutely, and I was, I, I was also, and 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 this right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait another week or so and try another one of the um, Guillermos, um, just to see if the travel had anything to do with it. But this Fernando is, well, this Fernando is awesome, in in the preparito. Yeah. I was really, I'm really, very impressed with it. a little bit of sweetness, Paul. Yeah, but, but it's 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 a very. It's complex, but still in that medium plus profile. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I smoked a gamma. I'm looking in the I'm trying to remember what I smoked the, now. 
So Fernando is actually, it's, believe it or not, it's a newer release. It was released in 2012, but it's a blend that was uh, Guillermo's father's blend. Yes. That yeah. they kind of took and tweaked. And I remember when I had it at the show two years ago, I was like, ah. Mm -hmm. But when they came into the shops, again, having a, having a cigar at the trade show is not the best place to make a, uh, an assumption. Because <laughs> when they came in, I thought it was a lot better, and I, I understood what that cigar is. But I thought if you want to talk, we talk Bell of the Ball. I thought that box press was the Bell of the Ball last year. I thought that was just it was perfect. Um, the Guillermo, I think, is great in the Corona Gorda. I think that's a that's my favorite in the Guillermo. Actually, that's that's the one I smoke very regularly. Is, yeah, is the Corona no, Gorda. I smoked a Guillermo Leone Corona Gorda. I wasn't a huge fan of that cigar. No, I'm the one who got you to try it because I like it. Yeah. And, and well, no, I did this one in 2012, in okay. May of 2012. Is that before you were open? Yeah, it was before we opened. That was before we opened. I tried it in the... The uh, Guillermo's very... I mean, I've had different sizes. And, and like, for example, the big ring gauge in the Guillermo, is, it falls down. Well, it, But in that Corona Gorda, it's great. So we tried them when they probably... or We tried them in 2012. Actually, Tim and I were doing the show in 2012, tried them. <clears throat> we weren't huge fans of that cigar when it first came out. Well, I tell you what, though. And that was the Guillermo Leone that we that we smoked. What a difference, though. I, I, I think it is one of the cigars where the size ma makes dramatic differences. Mm -hmm. um, you smoke the Robusto of the Guillermo Leone, mm -hmm. which happens to actually be my favorite size in it. Yeah. And then you smoke um, the Corona Gorda, Gorda, and it's great. You go to the 6x60, and it it's a totally Loses. different cigar. Yeah. And really? You, and you go to the regular Corona, mm -hmm. and it is so full. Really, I couldn't even believe it. Interesting. I like I don't. So I've never had a Fernando Leone Family Reserve before. So this is my first one, and I, I tell you, what, did, did did I like this one a did lot? Did you send Will some of those uh, um, Fernando Leone personal cigars that we had gotten our hands did on? Did I send you one of those, Will? I don't think I did. No, no, he no. didn't. Then 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 they're sitting in the Stogie Geese locker, probably to go. Um, Were those unbanded? Those are the unbanded. They were his personal cigars. Never been sold. Yes, yes. Um, w Will, you're gonna you're gonna be in for a special treat when those come. Oh, in. Yeah. I can't I can't <laughs> wait. That would be. I really would. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I've really become a La Aurora. Um, really, just been buying to La Aurora lately. I've really started to gravitate to that brand. Yep. And, and I I smoke a lot of them, especially in the Preferito lines, and. Um, and now, as you said, with the Fernando Leone, last one in this one. I mean, this this is a cigar that, you know, this this is going to be in my regular rotation. Yeah. Todd, did you smoke Untamed yet? I did. Um, yeah, I know it's a stronger cigar. Ex and and with that being said, it's definitely out of my personal flavor profile, but it was definitely a good cigar. And I actually came back from the show and I gave one to John, who's our manager and our cigar guy. And um, and he loved it. I loved it too. It's, and it um, needed. It was another one that needed to sit down after the show. And and it's it's really good. It's good. Had they haven't released it yet. It's good. I think it's going to do real well for them. I, I do too. In fact, oh yeah, um, I haven't seen this one. I haven't smoked. Do you have these next door? No, no, they they haven't been released yet. Okay. We'll have the first boxes in New England when they come in. I'll make sure I let you know. Nice. Yeah, uh, it's a good I cigar. Think, it falls I, a strong. I, it's a definite full cigar. Because cause he's, they were going to release it in October, but I think Will Manuel realized too that they weren't ready, right? And I think he's, they're not going to ship them until November now. I, I think they're they're better off waiting until they're ready. Is what I would say on that. I just had a couple more cigars on my list. We're running a little short on time for this segment, so uh, I smoked a Fume de Amor. Is that how you say that? Yes. Uh, from this is made by Illusion. Uh, I tried this in the Petite Corona. And now I also try this in the Toro, hoping that the Toro would be better. I'm just not a fan of this cigar. I don't know what it is about this blend. I smoke it, and it's not a bad cigar. I just, I, for whatever reason, I don't like it. And I love Illusion cigars. Well, I, I was going to say, that is actually probably the single most popular boutique brand yes. in our humidor. Yes. And we were really looking forward to it, and I think maybe part of its expectation yeah. Because Illusion, people just, they can't wait for them to come in. Yeah. We're always on back order. They can't wait for them to come in. And that is one of the few I smoked, and I went, it's a good cigar, but it doesn't have Dion's normal no, like wow just factor. something missing from it. It doesn't yeah. have the normal yeah. wow factor. Yes. It's not a bad cigar. It's just, 
expectation levels because right. Dion's done such a great job is yeah. rather high. Will, what are your I have thoughts? to smoke mine. I haven't smoked it yet. Okay, you haven't smoked it yet. The other one. Is... Oh, I know I did. What am I saying? I told Stogie Stan that I smoked it. Yeah, I did smoke it. What am I saying? I'm, but I haven't. What size did you smoke? I haven't smoked I smoked a size. Petit Corona and a Toro. That's what I did. Yeah, I smoked a Robusto. Um, I think it needs some time. That, that's what I'm hoping because I smoked the Robusto also, Will, and I just felt like it, it – like I said, it wasn't a bad cigar. It just right. wasn't – See, I thought it had flavor. I thought it had some pretty good – I like the – I mean, my initial reaction to this cigar versus my initial reaction to Epernay was I like this cigar. I have more positive on it. Um, it's not my favorite Illusione. What, what no. is? Um, the, the L.E. Singular Phantom that he released yeah, years Phantom, ago. Yeah, Phantom, but that oh. ECCJ – 20th that came out this year yeah um, is fantastic um i just yeah i think that eccj because it's it's anything i wanted out of the epernay that eccj gave me that little extra a little more body a little more strength that i thought the epernay always needed and now i get it with that cigar um that's gonna be a real big hit cigar for them well because do you have more cigars on your list one more all right do you want to? Uh, do we have time for that, guys? Or do we need to cut the segment? We could we could push it. Okay, no, we need. To, we, yeah, we'll just cut it. We gotta. Okay, okay. we'll push it. Next so week, yeah. here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a short break. We're gonna do a very bizarre segment, and people are gonna think I'm crazy, but I guarantee it's worth a listen. We're gonna do the cigar smokers tape take on vaping. It's gonna it's well, gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. Will, so with uh, the, as anybody who's watched the show and and you know that. You are a little bit crazy. I am. Just so, so I'll stay apologize tuned. in advance to our audience. <laughs> we, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 